Raspberry Pi just announced two new features for their free Pi Connect service. First is remote shell for basic remote terminal access, and second is support for every Pi ever made, either 32-bit or 64-bit Pi OS. And I had the perfect opportunity to test it out on my flight home today from the new Micro Center in Charlotte. One huge problem with screen sharing is how flaky it is if you have limited bandwidth or an unstable connection like on an airplane. It takes forever to start a session, and flaky Wi-Fi causes the session to lock up, meaning you can't do much. Remote terminal access, just relaying text commands, is the best solution for that problem. And sure, I have a VPN I could use with SSH to get to my Pi, but Raspberry Pi Connect just added support for remote shell access. It's similar to how SSH works, but with just SSH, you'd need your Pi exposed to the internet. Not good. That's why I have a VPN, but a private VPN like I have isn't something most people want to set up and maintain. So for any situation where you don't need the whole graphical environment or where you have limited bandwidth, you can use the new remote shell feature. From my Southwest flight, I could connect straight from my laptop to the Pi in my rack here, and terminal commands ran without a hitch. The initial connection was quick, and it was fast enough to even watch a movie through it. Well, at least if that movie's Star Wars Askumation and it's playing through Telnet. But the connection's good enough I could get actual work done on the Pi. My lone attempt at screen sharing locked up the first time I tried launching any apps. This was just a quick demo of how useful Remote Shell can be, and I'm glad Raspberry Pi's adding it to Pi Connect now. It's not quite the same as Tailscale, Cloudflare Tunnel, or Twingate, but it's useful if you have a Raspberry Pi you want to remote into without running a VPN. I have more about Raspberry Pi Connect, including how to get started, in the video linked below. You can also read more on Raspberry Pi's website, including how they're supporting every Pi device now, at least for remote shell access. Links below.